holidays are fast approaching with Thanksgiving only a few weeks away. Joining me now is Captain Tani from the Salvation Army Division Secretary for Greater Philadelphia. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. Now, everybody sees the shield, Salvation mm -hmm. Army. They see it everywhere for those viewers who say, I see it, but I'm not really quite sure what they're about. Give us some information. Sure. Well, yeah, most people think when they think of the Salvation Army, they think of our bell ringers, right? Um, and it's not unusual if I'm standing kettles, if somebody were to say to me, I'm not exactly sure what you do, but I know you do good. So let me put let me put something in there. And, you know, we really treasure that. Um, and we're honored by that, that, that we're trusted, you know, in that manner. And um, for us, here in Greater Philadelphia, we have many different ministry um, ex expressions. Um, we have homeless shelters. We have two family um, emergency homeless shelters. We have two senior sites. We mm. have um, a, 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 an anti-human trafficking program. Um, we have an anti-human trafficking home where um, those who are in the life that they can go to. Um, we do a, an intensive program called Pathway of Hope where we walk alongside people um, in order to help mm. them kind of overcome um, the barriers that they experience. We have a large education program. Um, you name it, we do it. Our goal is just to help people to meet, pe meet to meet the need at the point of need at the time of need. And it just keeps unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. We're at the holiday season and the drives for the kettles. What should people, if they say, okay, I'm not really sure, but those that are, you know, looking and say, you know what, I, I've been thinking about, I do put money in there. Where does that money go? Sure. You know, I, I love to say that when a little bit of change goes in, a whole lot of change happens. Um, because really our goal, as I said earlier, is to meet the need at the point of need, at the time of need, and it's different for different people um, based upon whatever they're faced with at life. You know, there are those who are struggling or homeless, right? So we can be that safe place where they can um, know that they can lay their head and they don't have to be afraid. Um, we can help them with, with their families. We can help kind of make it solid for them. Um, again, our, our Pathway of Hope program where we literally walk right beside because sometimes when people are in crisis, they really can't think, right? They really are just trying to go day by day and they really want to do better for themselves. Mm -hmm. They just need that little bit of help and almost like a cheerleader, right? To say, hey, you can do it. Um, we're there for seniors, right? Who are alone, who are essentially alone and we can be the family for them. But also mm -hmm. you go back to the fact that um, even starting with children, right? Within the Salvation Army, music is so important for us to teach children music. When you teach a child music, you help them with their math skills, right? You help them with social skills, their ability to concentrate. And I always say that um, when a child learns learns music, that no one can ever take that away from them, right? And um, that's that's really critical for us. So that's just a small bit. And of course, our our anti-human trafficking um, efforts is we're down in, um, in, in, in the Kensington area, right? We are we are without judgments, we're just there. We wanna be, again, that safe place and we wanna be able to um, to wrap our arms around um, these ladies and say, hey, it's gonna be okay, it doesn't have to be like this, we can help you. Um, and that is just such an honor for the Salvation Army to stand in the gap in that manner. And they continue to open up doors and unfold. So give us some background as far as how the Salvation Army got started. Sure. Well, um, William Booth, William and Catherine Booth in, in, in England in 1865, they, you know, they saw that there was a great need um, to really reach into those. You know, at the time you had to pay to go to church. There was a pew tax, right? And um, they just felt like the salvation that that the church in general was not reaching into into um, the the lives of those who, who were struggling with 
who were addicts or you know struggling with with alcohol and that sort of thing and so they just really wanted to reach into them and say hey let me let me help you and um, they did that and then they found that that the, the people were being saved they were coming to know about Christ but the church wasn't accepting them and so kind of the Salvation Army birthed out of that out of a very social justice um, sort of thing they um, William Booth just believed in um, you know you you have to you know soup soap and salvation right just really reaching into those lives and so um, then coming here Philadelphia is actually where the Salvation Army first started in the um, United States in 1879 a a young girl, Liza Shirley, um, right in, in, in the Kensington area, said, you know what? The Salvation Army needs to be here in Philadelphia, and the rest is history, really. That is mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. Great information. Mm -hmm. I know they were talking about the donuts at one time, like, huh, Salvation Army used to serve donuts mm -hmm. to people mm -hmm. and serve this, but at the end of the day, they served, and that is what it's mostly about. Now, what events do you have coming up? I think you're going back to the Kensington mm -hmm. area. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, of course, with it being the holiday season, we have um, Thanksgiving um, coming, and um, at all of our various locations around um, Philadelphia, we'll be doing Thanksgiving meals for for the the, the, the community leading up to the time. Um, but then on Thanksgiving Day, our Tabernacle um, Salvation Army, which is located on Masher Street, um, they will actually be going into the, the Kensington area um, right at K&A, and they'll be serving Thanksgiving meal to those who are on the streets who just, hey, it doesn't matter, right? Like, it is Thanksgiving for us all, and what can we do to bring a little bit of joy and a little bit of hope in that area? Awesome. Now, we know Christmas is a busy season mm -hmm. for the Salvation Army. So when someone says, okay, you know, I want to know where can I drop off toys, where are some of the locations that you guys might be located? Well, since we are in just every portion, we have eight different um, facilities here um, in just, just our worship and service centers. We encourage people to go to our, our website, which is um, Sal um, Army, um, the sasaphilly.org, um, and for them to come. And they can see on, on our website, and they can find whatever location is closest to them. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So if somebody said, you know what, I'm hearing about the the toy drive. I'm hearing about the Thanksgiving dinners, and I wanted to volunteer. What would be the process for that? Sure. Well, again, going to the sa.philly.org website, and um, there's a um, section. There's a Christmas section, and they can click on that, and they can see you know, various options that are available to them, and they can register. And then they can also go to the volunteer. That's if they want to be very specific. You know, if, if they want to give toys or that sort of thing um, at Christmas time, they can use that. And then for their for the volunteering, you can um, go. There's a section on the website for volunteering, and we'll get you set up. There's really lots of different things, and we really want to we want to connect donors with what makes their heart sing. And so, if someone wants to stand kettles and ring bells, um, if someone wants to provide toys, if they want to help us sort toys, um, it takes it is a pretty big effort. Um, it way we anticipate giving out about 30,000 toys, which um, requires a lot of manpower, a lot of woman power, a lot of power in general. Um, but it's so rewarding to know that what you've done, that there won't be one child um, in Philadelphia who doesn't have that, doesn't have something under the tree on Christmas morning. And that's important to us. We want everyone to feel special. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about Giving Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So Giving Tuesday is um, something that happens um, on December 3rd, actually, really across the nation. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something where um, I think that many different um, organizations work to get people to give on that day. I don't know really the history of it, but we certainly participate in it. We really, we love to um, encourage people to go to our website and on that you can donate and then um, we, it's just, it's just a wonderful opportunity for people and they, they can connect to um, kind of nationwide as people are giving. You hear lots about Giving Tuesday, just give on Tuesday. And, and I think that, um, you know, it has to do with obviously during the Christmas season, you're buying a lot of things for your family, maybe buying some things for yourself. I know when I'm out buying stuff, I buy a little treat for myself. But I think it, it makes us pause for just a second, right? And it makes us think about those 
who may not have as much as we do. So um, that it's it, it it's a nice opportunity to just pause and to think and to help others. And I think the shield, the Salvation Army shield, just because of everything that mm -hmm. it stands for, when people see it, it kind of you take a minute. No, maybe short, mm -hmm. maybe long, but I think that shield does that. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the Red Kettle kickoff. Sure, that is on November 13th. It's coming up really fast. You know, I think that many people I've, I've heard that I can't believe it's, you know, you know, it, October went so fast and now we're moving in. But we at the Salvation Army have been planning for a long time because we know this doesn't just happen. Um, it just doesn't come off. Um, for us, uh, the money that comes in in that red kettle is incredibly important to be able to, um, so that we can serve people throughout the year. And it's not just Christmas time. It really um, is what we need to, to survive the rest of the year so we can meet the needs at the point of need, at the time of need. So it's going to be on November 13th um, at the Bourse um, Market. And um, it's at noon. And we encourage, if people want to come out, there will be many different personalities there and um, chipper from hers. And um, it'll, be, it'll be a wonderful um, opportunity just for us, just to get the word out, just so that people... I mean, I do, again, I think that when people see our kettle, they, they, they think they know, but it's just our ability to get it out and to say some of the things that we're, you know, saying here that what goes in there really does make a difference in, in the lives of people that we serve. We, sometimes Salvation Army has the Christmas in July, mm -hmm. but like you stated, once during this Christmas season, it's really finances that are going through the year mm -hmm. to support. So it's not just about, you know, a Christmas season. It's about giving so that they can continue to give. Mm -hmm. Even once Christmas is over, they're still feeding. Mm -hmm. They're still providing shelter for the homeless. They're still giving that extra mm -hmm. care. So the red kettle goes way past Christmas, but this is just the kickoff time sure. yeah. so that people can give. And the Boris building, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that mm -hmm. people can come to and just kind of help celebrate. Absolutely, kind of just help us celebrate and kick off. It is it is an exciting time, you know. I um, Sometimes uh, working with, with within the Salvation Army, you start to hear bells in your sleep for sure. Um, but when you step back and think about what's really happening there, what you just described, it's amazing how quarters, nickels, dimes, um, a dollar here and there from a from a great many people. I think that when someone puts in their quarter, they don't think that that they're doing much. But when you put all that, that's that's how we we've built it, right? When you put everybody together, whose hearts are just moved with compassion for 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 hu humanity, really, um, it is it's wonderful to be a part of that. So I know somebody's probably saying, you know what? Y'all pulling on the heartstrings a little bit. And they say, can I, if I'm riding past the Salvation Army on my way to work, can I drop off something there? Is that mm -hmm. possible? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, if, if it's easier for you to go to your local Salvation Army, if you, you know, not everybody uses, you know, a credit card or what have you, um, we'll take whatever you have. You can stop by. You can drop it off. We'll gladly accept it. We can give you a receipt and... Um, we're just grateful for all the little pieces that come together that really are like a chain. You know, I think of that picture of the world and there's, you know, hands gathered together. And that's really what the Salvation Army is. We are not one person. It's not just me. It's not just um, the people who work with me. It's really a true partnership. And we're grateful that we get to, that the, that the community allows us to be their, their hands. It's, it's a great honor. I know we're talking about the holiday season. I know we're talking about kettles and we're talking about Thanksgiving, but we always hear about kids mm -hmm. bragging about this camp mm -hmm. that the Salvation Army takes kids to. Can you mm -hmm. talk to us about that camp? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so it's up in the um, Scranton area. It's called Camp Lador. And um, it is a place, to be very honest, there was a, um, a gentleman that I knew, a gentleman, a young man um, who said to me, very real, and this will be a very real story. He, I asked him, so what, do, you, do you like going to camp? And he's from one of our, our cores, and he said, when I'm at Camp Lador, I don't have to be afraid about being shot. Mm, wow. 
And I thought about that. Very real. He was very... Transparent. Just, just transparent, Ooh. right? You know, that when he's there, um, he doesn't have to worry about the things that that concern him at home. He doesn't have to. He gets. He just gets to be a kid. He's not taking care of, of, of any brothers or sisters, right? Mm -hmm. He just to be, gets to be a kid. He gets to learn. There's horseback riding and boating and swimming and um, hiking and all the things that um, I can remember other kids who they have like a little farm there and they're like, it's so cow, it's a real cow, you know, you know all that. Um, and sometimes it's stuff that you can take for granted when, when you grow with that. I, I grew up in Ohio. Um, I grew up in the country of Ohio. And so mm -hmm. to me, that was just normal. But when you've just grown up in the city, right? Like if that's all you know, mm -hmm. um, it's really, it is, it's a peaceful place for sure. Well, I am glad to hear that a lot of kids talk about it, but then there are still a lot of kids who may think that they never seen a deer. There's a lot of kids that go up there and say, that's my first time seeing a deer, mm -hmm. my first time seeing this, my mm -hmm. first time seeing that. So make sure you go to the website because they have activities for kids. They have act activities for adults. And this is what putting money into the red kettle does it takes kids to camp right. it funds kids mm -hmm. to go to mm -hmm. camp to get away mm -hmm. and that is a real story for mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of young people mm -hmm. they don't have to worry about where where they're going to eat they don't have to worry mm -hmm. about if they're going to go outside if they're going to get beat mm -hmm. up if they're going to do so it's awesome so you got to make sure that you go to the website check out the salvation army find out what the red kettles where they are where they're located now as far as the salvation army when it comes to activities and anything else that you have coming up? Mm -hmm. um, you know, throughout, all of our centers are hubs of activity, right? Um, it just doesn't pick up at Christmas time right now. We're well into our, our school year um, after school programming um, where we're doing STEM, you know, with, mm -hmm. with the children. Um, everything that we do is very much designed. We say that we want to give a hand up not a handout, right? We want to teach these children how um, to help them with their homework, right? To teach them what, what, what they're learning in school, right? We do the, we have the, the, the 21st Century um, Learning Center and we're very grateful to be a part of that. But that's, that's high standards, right? So we have to make sure that we meet that. Um, we also have, of course, our senior programs that happen every day. Um, we have on, on Wissahickon Avenue, we have our Croc Center, which is um, a large multi, multi-faceted um, community center where we have two pools where we're teaching people how to swim, we're helping people with their, with their, their health as well. Um, music is happening there as well. It's, um, it's, it's, it's an amazing place, but that's just you know one of the few right things. And of course, um, we have our church, right? Every day, you know, we do our various um, you know, Bible studies and, and education and that sort of thing so that we can just, again, meet people at the time, at, at the point of need, at the time of need. I have had the pleasure to go to the Croc Center. They were doing Zumba outside. Mm -hmm. When you walk into the pool area, I was intimidated <laughs> by the pool on the left mm -hmm. because I could just see myself getting out of breath because the, the pool was huge huge mm -hmm. but then they had the play area mm -hmm. so it's so much going on mm -hmm. and this is what the red kettles are going towards so just give the information one more time sure. so uh -huh. that people yeah. can not miss it and make sure that they are able to get connected absolutely we encourage them to go to our website safilly.org um, if you want to volunteer there's a section where you can volunteer if you want to provide toys and that sort of thing at christmas time you can you know click on the christmas um, you can see whatever location is is close to you um, and if if you're in need Please come down and let us let us help you. Well, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Captain, for thank your you. time. Mm -hmm. And thank you for tuning in to Philly Cam Voices. Make sure you go to YouTube, Roku, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Even if you want to be a part of the a, uh, a part of the Philly Cam family, make sure you email us, check us out, because we would love to have you and your ideas and your creativity. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>